Yes, I know. You've seen this exact video many, many times before, but I promise I got some unique opinions for this one. Eh, at least for the most part. Also, I'm only including bosses from Pantheon 5, and I'm mostly banking, ranking my, based on my personal experience, as well as its P5 variant, because that's usually what I'm going to go against. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Forty-two, massive moss charger, D tier. I'm, there's nothing really to say that you haven't heard a million times. Bland, boring, ridiculously easy, and the smaller version in Green Path is way more dangerous. It's also the first fight I ever beat on my very first try, so that's just kind of embarrassing. Three out of ten. Next, number forty-one, Elder Who, D tier. This one is also a no-brainer. Some people like this boss, but I cannot say I'm one of them. His only saving grace is his non-existent HP count, but even with him teleporting away, it makes me want to throw my keyboard into a blunder. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of teleporting bosses, and that will be reflected on this list. 4 to 10. 4 to 20. Number 40. Winged Nosk. D tier. Oh my f- Oh my god, I hate this boss. So much. But it's objectively a better boss than the other two, so I had to put it above, because I actually have some attack variation. But oh my god, this guy is just Ven Fly King, except he's more annoying, because he just throws his goons at you, and it just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. 4 out of 20. Number 39, Umu, D tier. Once again, this is a pretty popular opinion, but it cannot be understated how annoying of a mechanic waiting for a boss to do one of its couple of attacks is just so why you can I start attacking it. I, mean, I like the concept of having to make the boss vulnerable first, it's a very like, Mario-esque style, but oh my god, this fight is just so annoying. Especially because if you mistake, mess up once, you take double damage for it. So it's just annoying. The only saving grace of this boss is that you can just kill it pretty quickly once you get it once, or maybe twice if you're not having a good day. Uh, yeah, this thing is annoying, so 5 out of 20. Number 38, Marmu, D tier. Yeah, Marmu is annoying, so. Like, who genuinely enjoys this boss? Is there any Marmu defenders out there? Is there one? I, I, would, I would like to see them. 5 out of 20. Number 37. Oh, Blobbles, D tier. These lovers are very, very annoying. Like, very. Like, yes, yes, annoying much. Yada yada. These two are actually one of the five bosses I have not beaten on Radiant yet. That's because I have absolutely no patience and I can't be bothered to beat these annoying pieces of crap. Cringe Balloons, 6 out of 20. 36. Soul Warrior, C tier. Okay. We've gone to the point where I don't dislike the bosses anymore. This guy's actually a pretty good mini boss, although, I, uh, like everybody else says, what is he doing in B5? Literally, why is he here? That's mostly what I got to say, really. It's fun to run around and bully him, and his goons aren't very annoying, so he, he's alright. He's alright in my books. Uh, 7 out of 20. Number 35, Fluke Mom, C tier. Yeah, I actually put Fluke Mom way higher up than I thought it was going to be. This boss is actually pretty fun to learn how to kill fast, and it actually holds a special place in my heart for being the boss that made me rage quit the game for 9 months because a Hollow Knight player made fun of me for not being able to kill it. Like, in my defense, I had no nail upgrade, so I couldn't one-shot it, and it was just really annoying because also there's not a close bench to it at all. Um, top of my personal bias, I also think this boss is just pretty entertaining to shred through. This is a solid 7 or 10. And 720, I can't read. Number 34, Zeto, C tier. This spear spewing mother fricker is just irritating sometimes. I swear, no matter how much I dodge, sometimes a spear is just inevitable into the face. That being said, for being the first dream boss you encounter, he's alright. And in P5, he's pretty easy. 7 out of 20. Number 33, Vengefly Kings, C tier. This dynamic duo is quite a fun fight, to be honest. His goons aren't very annoying at all, and it's pretty tricky to fight to do the fight fast. And if you couldn't tell from my playstyle from the footage, 
I go very, very, very fast. So this fight is definitely an easy to learn, hard to master kind of fight. 8 out of 20. Number 32. Gruz Mother. C tier. An easy fight. Ugh, oh, I can't talk. An easy fight that goes by quite quickly. Yet again, it's fun to do fast, and it's a very tight gap to get through all the spikes and, of course, Gruz Mother herself and not get yourself hit. 8 out of 20. Number 31. No Eyes. C tier. This fight is cool, and No Eyes has a really cool design and lore. This fight can honestly go one of two ways. It's either can be very annoying, and it feels like the goons can just like home in on you, but other times it can be very fun to dodge and weave through the spirits and go very swiftly. 8 out of 20. Number 30. Soul Master. C tier. This is an alright fight, but for myself and many other players, the first time, it's very hard. A long walk between the bench backs all the way through Soul Sanctum is quite treacherous. That being said, it's still a decently fun fight that you can get through pretty quickly when you have all your upgrades. 8 out of 20. Number 29. The Collector. B tier. This fight is alright, and there are many jokes and pranks and gags to be made about this name, but at the end of the day, it's a fun fight and is absolutely irritating in literally every binding run. Whether it's not being able to one-shot his goons, or just not being able to heal during this fight, this fight is an absolute bloodbath, and the absolute grim reaper of all of my binding runs. 9 out of 20. Number 28. God Tamer. B tier. This devious double battle is quite an enjoyable time. Coming immediately after the Collector in P5, it's very fun in the binding run to weave through its attacks, and be able to frankly, frantically try to heal up from sometimes 1 HP. Cool fight, it's a little easy, but considering its place in P5 and in Call Out, it can't imagine it being much harder while actually feeling like a fun boss fight. 9 out of 20. Number 27, Gorb, B tier. Fun fight, weave through, and pogo off of Gorb so that way you can get to the spears. Not much else to say about this fight, I think it's cool, I think it's fun. I think it's a 10 out of 20. Number 28, Markov. B tier. This fight is an absolute deal breaker for more people, for most people. <laughs> this one is either a love it or hate it kind of fight. But personally, I'm pretty indifferent about the topic. It's uh, decently fun, and I cannot beat it on Radiant, but yeah, it's a cool fight. Alright, lore, 10 out of 20. Number 25, Crystal Guardian, B tier. Decent fight, and I'm a sucker for same size fights, and this one does that well. Overall, very easy, quick fight. Really the only reason he's this high is because I love the concept and the design. 11 out of 20. Number 24, Enraged Guardian. Decent fight that outranks its other easier counterpart because it is harder, although it's, it's really not that much harder. And the difficulty that is present is kind of artificially raised in my opinion. Making the boss slightly faster and do more damage isn't really a great way to increase difficulty in my opinion. I, I'm looking for like a drastic change in speed, maybe like a few new attacks here and there to spice it up a bit. And maybe a new movement option would be nice and we've gone a long way for this pissed off piss hand. Number 23, Traitor Lord, B tier. This fight is good, it's hard the first time and is risky in subsequent playthroughs, and with one minor mistake can leave you absolutely dead in the water. Good lore. 13 out of 20. Number 22, Hornet Protector, B tier. This is a great fight, and it's the first one I would consider really great. Quite a difficult fight for the first time, being the first real enemy with movement options. Hornet is the start of how I love my bosses, moving around a lot and attacking you while doing so. Of course, she's very easy after you've completed the game, but she's very fun to bully and kill quickly, so I would say she's great. 14 out of 20. Number... What the dog doing? Galleon. B tier. Galleon... Galleon is an interesting one. This great menace... Grimace meal? ...is very fun. Summoning more projectiles as the fight goes on gives you a sense of progression in the fight. Fun fight that actually made me use Heavy Blow in order to beat him on Radiant to keep him from bumping into me. But yeah, I love this guy. He's cool. Really cool design. Cool weapons. 14 out of 20. Number 20. Broken Vessel. A tier. 
This fight is a great time. This same size as the night thing is a cool, albeit easy boss that I think many people, including myself, beat for the first try. That being said, it's awesome design and bully ability makes me love this fight. 14 out of 20. Number 19, False Knight, A tier. This fight is a supreme introduction fight that is fun to fight on a first playthrough and in Pantheon 5. Is there much else to be said? This is a great fight. 14 out of 20. Number 18, Soul Tyrant, A tier. This is a great boss. Obviously, a souped up version of Soul Master, this is a very, very fun fight. Although, it does have the downsides of having my absolute pet peeve, which is teleporting so god damn much. Jesus Christ. Ugh, so I can't put it any higher than this, but if they toned down the TPing, I might have put it higher. 14 out of 20. Number 17, Oro and Mado, A tier. This is a dumbled battle done supremely well. The way this fight flows is very fun, and weeping between the Dastardly Brothers is quite enjoyable. The fight is actually quite a difficult fight for me compared to other bosses, so there's that as well. Overall, a great boss. 14 out of 20. Number 16, The Watcher Knights, A tier. This battle is very, very fun. Turning through the six goblins health bar is quite enjoyable, and narrowly dodging between two at a time is a great amount of fun. This would be higher if, and I know this sounds crazy, but maybe on Ascendant have three at one time? It could be a fun challenge that would make up for the fact that in Pantheon 5 you can quickly shred through these clowns one at a time if you know what you're doing. Still a fantastic boss, 14 out of 20. Number 15, Lost Kin, A tier. This is yet another same size fight, and oh boy is it a doozy. This malicious piece of crap will constantly charge around to you, going up and down, and the goons that he summons are very fast, and he, they summon a lot of goons. That being said, the one thing that makes me love this fight is how its bullying mechanic is used to the absolute fullest. Knocking the, sh knocking the weird kin back with Shade Soul and hitting it above you when it dashes is very fun to do fast, and it puts it at a 15 out of 20. Number 14, Dung Defender. A tier. This guy alright. He's easy, he's fun, and he's enjoyable, and everybody loves Olbram. 15 out of 20. Number 13, Hornet Sentinel, A tier. This fight takes Hornet and makes her much faster, have a high HP count, and basically depends upon your fast reaction. This tight battle definitely took me over 30 minutes to be on the Radiant for the first time, probably due to my overly fast playstyle, but still, very fun and engaging and quick, and... It'll leave either to your swift defeat or hers. 15 out of 20. Number 12. The Grey Prince. A tier. Zote gone wild with this one. Zote summons relentless goons, constantly creates ways to jump over, and never ceases the pressure. You'll get two, maybe three opportunities to heal in this entire fight, unless you're taking a gamble, so good luck. Quite a hard... But pretty fair boss fight, I'd put it at 15 out of 20. Number 11, White Defender, A tier. It's Dung Defender, but quite a bit harder. I like this guy a lot, and because he's the first dream boss, and I just had to throw myself at him for like 30 minutes before I beat him for the first time, I really like him. 15 out of 20. Number 10, Grim, A tier. Cool sexy Tumblr man makes his debut, and boy is this one fun. It's an absolutely a reaction based boss fight, and I couldn't be happier as each attack keeps you weaving while dealing as much damage as possible. Man, if only this fight was harder, then maybe I'd enjoy it more. 16 out of 20. Number 9 Nightmare King Grim. S tier. Cool, sexy Tumblr man, except he's cranked up to 11. This fight keeps you constantly on your toes, dodging through every attack, trying to get one or maybe two hits off. Meanwhile, every single mistake costs double the price. I actually really love this fight, but uh, as you can tell by my lower ranking of it, I'm not as much a fan of it as the other people. Honestly, I prefer the modded version Inferno King Grim, but this fight is still fantastic, make no mistake, and god damn is that bad, that soundtrack a banger. 17 out of 20. Number 8, Brooding Moloch, S tier. Okay, you guys probably thought I forgot about this weird beetle, but I in fact didn't. I just love this fight. 
This is the perfect early game boss fight to practice with no equipment, and it is the perfect end game boss fight to keep you on your toes while weaving through its attacks. Add on top of that, the cool lore and killing Piso, and you have the recipe for probably what is my favorite early game boss in any video game. 18 out of 20. Number 7, Hive Knight, S tier. Now this nail on nail battle, I can get behind. The biggest crime in this game is that there is no second harder version of Hive Knight. It's, do I love this guy in this cool high, cool fighting style? Bro literally encapsulates teleports behind you, nothing personal kid. And his goons that he swarms are actually pretty fair, although they are a little bit annoying, and they're pretty hard to dodge. But this fight is absolute bliss. I love it. 18 out of 20. Number 6, Nail Sage, S tier. This guy looks a little bit too much like Baby Yoda at first, but don't let that fool you. This man will absolutely put your positioning skills to the test in a way that I don't think any other boss in Hollow Knight does. Once again, as a pattern that's easy to notice, I love fights where bullying is the main mechanic, and waiting for this guy to start his 3 attack and using Shade Soul to put him back ensures your safety, and I think that's really fun. And just weaving in and out of his attacks, Poe going off of him sometimes to make sure you can get a hit in or two. All the while, you're avoiding his gigantic sweeping attacks. This fight is an absolute masterpiece. 18 out of 20. Number 5. Paintmaster Sheo. S tier. This is a super fun fight, and it's also very unique from all the other ones. His paint telegraphing his attacks is a super cool, creative, and fun mechanic. The only reason this fight isn't higher is because it's a bit on the easier end. 18 out of 20. Number 4. Sisters of Battle. S tier. This fight is a very fun one. I actually discovered two new attacks during this when, when I was recording for this video because I was playing like an idiot. They went on the walls hella weird if you're watching. But yeah, there's not much I can say about this fight that hasn't been said a thousand times. It's absolute masterpiece. It is the epitome of dodging and weaving between attacks in this game. 19 out of 20. Number 3. Absolute Radiance. S tier. Now this is a final boss fight, an epic climactic fight where you literally ascend to kill god, pulling off an absolute FMAB shit, and I'm here for it all the way. This fight is ridiculously fun to work to play as risky as you possibly can, and I don't think there's a fight that I've played more in this game just because of how fun that is. 19 out of 20. Number 2, Failed Champion, S tier. Now this is a way to revitalize the first boss in the game. Trading through this guy's HP bar as quick as you can, but one mistake can easily make or break your run. The only reason this fight isn't a 20 out of 20 is because of the cheese tactic that gives you infinite soul every one third of the fight. Other than that, I honestly think this would have been a perfect 20 out of 20 because oh my god, is this fight so enjoyable and is like one of the only few fights in this game that actually gives me anxiety during my P5 runs. 19 out of 20. Number 1. Pure Vessel, S tier. Okay, I know this guy teleports, but this fight is just too good, and I, I know this isn't a unique opinion at all, but god damn is this fight good. It takes the first final boss you fight and makes it hell, but it is so satisfying and rewarding to pull off. Standing atop the Pantheon in the night, this fight goes so unbelievably hard. The music, the way every single attack crescendos to the epic climax when you're finally able to scrape by and you hear the screech that pierces the heavens as God frowns upon you for your hubris. An absolute banger of a fight and my favorite fight in literally any video game. Period. 20 out of 20.